Hello, dearest friends, beautiful souls of love and light. This is Nanari, Princess of the Sea, coming to you with a new video. I have been receiving many, many messages from Source lately, from the Master Artist lately, in various signs and forms about this video that I'm doing here. And uh, being asked many times over about uh, the many near-death experiences that I've had. And so I'm coming to you with this video to share with you uh, some of those experiences and the wisdom that I've received from those experiences. First of all, what is a near-death experience for those who don't, do not know? What a near-death experience is, is where you actually die in some form or fashion. In other words, the soul leaves the body in some form or fashion for a certain period of time, yet you get a keen sense and awareness, basically, that uh, you still have a mission and a purpose and you are not done yet here on this earth. And so basically, you come back. Um, I will explain here more in depth about that here. My first near-death experience in this life, in this timeline that I remember, is when I was 15. I had a ruptured uh, ovarian cyst and I literally bled out. I was flatlined somewhere between a little under over five minutes, uh, as I recall. And uh, what occurred, I'll explain from a physical standpoint, and then I'll explain what occurred from a spiritual standpoint. From a physical standpoint, I was in excruciating pain on my right side, and uh, the doctors at that time, conventional medicine, thought that I had appendicitis, and that my appendix was either about to rupture and burst, or that it had. Um, usually when your uh, appendix bursts, uh, you are either dead or near death. Uh, and I, so I was extremely physically ill and uh, was rushed into emergency surgery. And uh, upon such emergency surgery, uh, came to find out, uh, coming out of the surgery, that it wasn't my appendix at all. It was a ruptured cyst that I had on my ovary. And I literally was bleeding internally and did bleed out. Um, and um, so that's what happened from a physical standpoint. What happened in those moments of my death, though, um, is a whole nother matter. In those moments, um, what I experienced was quite um, profound, and sometimes I have a hard time putting it into words. I attempted to explain it in my second book, although, don't, although I don't know if I really did explain it in totality clearly, because there is really no human earthly language for the experience. You just kind of have to experience it. That said, what occurred in those moments for me is I first saw myself out of body. I was looking down upon uh, the surgeons and the hospital staff and everyone who was there in the room. And I could see my body and I could see myself, you know, cut open and, and what they were attempting to do and how they were attempting to revive me, uh, you know, with the paddles and, uh, you know, attempting to stop the bleeding internally that was going on in the body. And at first there was a momentary reaction in which it was like oh okay so i'm out of body not realizing that i was dead and then in those moment the next moment i experienced the thought of or it wasn't even really a thought it was an experience of i'm dead and then it was like the human earthliness in me because my body was still you know i was still attached to the body the, the soul is still attached to the body in those moments because you haven't shifted yet. Uh, and all of this happens in just a split second in Earth time. Uh, although in linearity it may seem like forever, you know, that five minute period of time that I was flatlined, uh, you know, seems like a forever moment really in spirit. 
um, yet it, uh, also at the same moment it's like a blink of an eye it's a flash it's very quick and so what happened was I had that realization of oh my god I'm dead and I started to freak out it was like oh my god I want to get back into my body I don't want to die I want to go back you know uh, kind of thing and I started freaking out it was in those moments that my spirit guide Holly who is a fairy had come to me and she basically, uh, you know, attempted to soothe my fears, so to speak, realizing that I was still, you know, attached to the physical form in that sense that I hadn't come into the light, so to speak. And she guided me down this tunnel, which I can best describe as it, it didn't seem like it was dark. It was it was really like just surrounded by this infinite blue light. And yet in the distance, I also saw a bluish whitish light in the distance as we were traveling and I ended up in this white light and back merged with source is the best way I can describe it and in those moments I went through what we call from an earthly standpoint as the life review and I came to understand that the life review itself that you know we've all known to occur is actually not just a life review of this life here that we are living in it is a life review of all of our lives in all dimensions in all multi-dimensions multi-universes parallel universes parallel lives all of it at once and it happens in an instantaneous moment and you go through and you see where your soul's path is you see where your soul's progression is you see if you are meant to stay or go if this is the chosen chosen exit point that you are choosing to take and where you would be heading next on the journey and so i was shown this all very clearly I was also given um, a lot of wisdom, like what we would consider like a download, if you will, on many various aspects of my journey and what was next. I was also told uh, by Source uh, and along with my guides who were there, all of them, um, as well as Holly, my spirit guide, that uh, what would happen is, is that the doctors would uh, cover this up that they would not tell my parents what had happened, that there would be nothing in my medical records. I was also shown that I was meant to come back because I had had and have a purpose, and also that I would be having four physical children on this earth, um, you know, giving birth to four children. And uh, I was also shown, you know, in detail what my purpose was, what my soul agreements were, and what it was that I was to do next on the path on the journey upon coming back, and how I would go through a series of various things uh, in various shifts and forms. Um, I was not given the wisdom at that point about the uh, soul exchanges and also the uh, walk-in that was to occur later I was given that subsequent uh, in other near deaths but at that point I was given that information of where I was on the path and what was the next steps for me and so I came back out of this light um, you know but also with the sense of what I do now understand from the many lives that um, I've had and the many deaths I've had already 11 of them now in this life which is all there is on the other side is love because that momentary freak out that I had about oh my god I'm dead as we started traveling down the tunnel and going back to source going back through all of my lives and everything that was in the life review that sense of egoness of uh, fear and doubt and worry and all of that it was just gone there was nothing um, I saw everything as an experience I did not see things from an earthly perspective and so what we have on the other side is everything is experience and what I was also shown in subsequent um, near deaths that I had was that 
there are some times when we are still attached to the humanness of experience uh, with that fear or doubt or worry or things that we haven't healed from this life or others that we kind of go into this place of an energy field of a holding pattern which is why you will see some spirits who feel that they are earthly bound here um, because they're somewhat earthly bound but they're also in sort of a holding pattern energy resonance until they come into the understanding of no longer holding on to those attachment aspects of the human experience of fear doubt worry because all there is on the other side in the spiritual realms and with source is love is experience uh, rather than seeing things of, you know, oh, I killed somebody, oh my God, how devastating, or oh, I was killed, you know, uh, there was so much pain, or oh, I left so-and-so in this life and how much pain there was. That's the human aspect. And so we kind of go into this healing energy space, if you will, until we come to resolve that within us and an understanding that, oh, I just chose that as my experience for the soul agreement that I chose to experience it as. And so there's a sense of um, detachment, but it's really not detachment or attachment that occurs uh, on the other side in spirit when we're with source and in the spiritual realms. It's really a resonance of being and that's why you hear most of us as spiritual teachers uh, and spiritual mentors and spiritual guides uh, here on this earth who are doing these type of videos and, and sharing the wisdom about be love now or, you know, as Gandhi said, be the change you wish to see in the world. That's that resonance of being that um, we are speaking of uh, because that is what is on the other side, if you will, or in the spiritual realms of existence and with source is just a sense of experience. A, just a sense of being. There is no attachment and there is no detachment. Um, we have the experience of duality here on this earth of attachment and detachment. Uh, where that, In between that field, uh, Rumi says it beautifully when he says, in between the right and wrong doings, there is a field. I will meet you there. Um, what he's referring to, which is my beloved sweet troubadour in that life, um, as Rumi, what he is referring to is that field of being, that resonance of just being. And that's what we really experience in the spiritual realms and with source. And that is that essence of love because that's all there is on the other side. So for those of you who have had, uh, you know, spiritual readings from uh, loved ones who've crossed over on the other side, who have said, oh, they feel so guilty about, you know, something that they did with you in this life or, you know, whatnot, that is actually that healing energy resonance uh, holding space that they are in before they shift over into the light of the other side, in which they come in to communicate with you if they are feeling guilty about, uh, you know, having committed suicide in this life or if they are having uh, you know guilt or healing or hurt about uh, you know something that they did in this life that they regret or whatnot until they come into that space they will be in that healing space once you go over into the light as it were or into the space of source or the other side the spiritual realm all these different names that we have for the other side as it were once you cross over into that light you have no more experience of guilt or hurt or pain there is just love there is just love and beingness and experience and so any of us who are feeling hurt about someone on the other side and are asking you know are they okay on the other side or are they still feeling guilty about committing suicide or are they feeling guilty about something that they did here in this life when they have truly gone to the other side and shifted into that resonance there is none of that it is us who here on this earth are holding on to that in attachment, uh, in somehow feeling their earthly body, which they no longer have that experience of. And so the other subsequent near-death experiences that I have that um, I will share with you, um, I had uh, another one in which uh, when I was pregnant with my uh, second son, Matthew, um, that uh, I went and did something that the doctors, conventional medicine said was totally unheard of, supposedly. 
Um, I had a severe asthma attack, which is what brought on the near-death experience. I was about uh, five months pregnant with my son, and as a result of this severe asthma attack, I went into premature labor with him, and uh, they had to stop my labor, and also in that same process, I went and, as I said, did something that the conventional medicine doctors thought uh, was virtually impossible. I went to zero oxygen saturation. Um, so I was considered clinically dead uh, once more. And again, as I went back into this light, going back home to source, I experienced all of these things along with downloads upon my journey, um, you know, uh, that I'm sharing with you here of that I am presence, the I am essence that we are. Um, we just are free from carrying that stuff with us on the other side. Uh, because we understand that who we are on the other side is who we are to be here in this life, which is something that I became keenly aware of in all of my near deaths and have come into a space on uh, for many years now and uh, also within the twin soul journey of that last little uh, layer in peace with uh, my beloved sweet troubadour Chris is that enlightenment is having such a strong and clear sense of peace within you that even your thoughts and outside circumstances and experiences and situations are free from disturbing it it's kind of like if you have seen the Matrix Trilogy, um, which, uh, you know, Neo is standing there at one point in the movie, uh, in various parts of the trilogy, uh, there's one part uh, in which there are bullets flying at him, and he's just standing there, and he dodges them, and then there's one point where he just stands there, and he's just being, and uh, the bullets don't even touch him. That's that space of enlightenment, and that's actually what true enlightenment is, and how important it is to be in the present moment in experiencing that, and experiencing the infinite joy and peace and presence that is within it. And um, I equate this to eating food, and the reason I say that is, is that when you're in that space of total enlightenment, you really experience being fully present. When I'm eating food, I do not eat food uh, now and haven't for many years for a sense of nourishment. Um, there are times, yes, when I feel famished, um, and so the machine needs, you know, to be run, so, you know, putting fuel within it. However, it's more from a sense of pure peace and enjoyment of being in the present moment. And when I'm eating food, I take in its essence and I eat slowly and some people tease me because I've actually been a slow eater my whole entire life. I take in that essence and in each moment my thoughts are in gratitude and in peace and in gratitude for what it took for that meal to be made. Uh, whether I cooked it and made it myself or someone else did, uh, who grew the food, uh, the ground that it came from, the place that it came from, who prepared it and packaged it, all of, you know, all of the different aspects, uh, you know, the earth herself for growing it, uh, all the different things that, you know, occurred, I take in that essence, and I speak about this in my second book, uh, as well uh, in about the blades of grass in the meditation that I did uh, one day in watching uh, someone who was uh, mowing the lawn across the place from where I was living and how grateful I was for each blade of grass and so that's what happens when you come into that space of the I am presence that I've received in my near-death experiences and what happens is is that the, what follows the I am that you speak and you vibrate and you be comes looking for you rather than you looking for it. So if you say, I am vibrant health, then that vibrant health comes looking for you. If you say, I am, as I say, I am my beloved sweet troubadour's princess, I am the princess, I am his princess, it then comes looking for me. 
I'm not reaching outside of myself. And that is another thing that I've come to understand on the journey, both spiritually and also from the near-death experiences and downloads that I've received in wisdom from connecting with Source and going home to be with Source with the Master Artist is, it comes looking for you. When you make that statement of I am, it's a very powerful statement because that's who Source is. That is who the Master Artist is, and that is who we all are. Ye too are gods, as Jesus said. So standing in that God presence of the I am, when you speak I am, you are invoking it here, right now, in being very present. And as long as you have breath, within you. Someone needs what you have to give in being in service. That is why I came back from all of my near deaths, because very clearly I understood, as Source told me each time I went home straight to Source, that I was needed. Not needed in the sense of neediness, but needed in the sense of being in service to help others to awaken to the I am presence within them of what I've received in being home from so with Source in all of those moments. And what has also come through is a clear understanding in my near deaths as well as the who and the what is what we are meant to focus on. The why and the how is Source's job, is the Master Artist's job, the universe, God, whatever you so choose to call it. Oftentimes we attempt to control the why and the how. That is not our job. We are to focus on the who and the what. The who and the what could be questions like this. What am I appreciating in my life? If it is one thing that I've come to understand in going home to Source and all my many near-death experiences is that of appreciation in each moment really appreciating, just like those blades of grass I talked about, just like the eating, you know, I talked about the eating of food. What am I appreciating in my life? Because the word appreciation means to grow in value. So whatever you are appreciating I walk around in a state of infinite appreciation, which infinite appreciation and love are the same resonance. When you love something or someone or some essence, it is loving yourself because you are seeing within that thing or person what also resides within you. And so what am I appreciating in my life? What would love do now in this moment is another one of the what that you are to ask. Before you reach for anger or hate or other earthly emotions of frustration, what is the loving thing to say, seeing as God sees, as I've explained in my other videos? All of my videos are simply a reflection of what I've received from Source in my many near deaths. Who am I to be in this moment is another question that you can ask yourself. What is getting ready to give birth to me now and through me now? What is the vision? What is the true vision for my life and for the life of others in being in service for the benefit of all, including me? What is my heart saying? And I've explained the difference between heart in my, uh, you know, and ego in my other videos and the difference between intuition and thought as well. Intuition is that inspiration, that vision that comes to you immediately. Thought is something that you perpetually have over and over again about something that first comes as an idea or an inspiration, but that you repeatedly do so over and over again. But what is your heart saying in each moment, the true essence of what your heart is saying? And I'll refer you to my other videos here on YouTube to listen to so that you understand the difference between the heart and the ego and what the heart space is. 
Who is to come into my life? What gifts do I have currently? And who is in my life now that can help me with this vision in assistance, in coming into community or communion? What gift am I to give in this moment to myself and to all in benefit of all? And what gift am I to bring to the moment that is the now moment? These are all questions that we're meant to ask in life rather than the who or rather than the why and the what, which is up to the universe. I'm sorry, rather than the why and the how, which is up to the universe, the who and the what is our responsibility or ability to respond. How and when something is to come about is to be in universal divine timing, in sources timing. Thy will be done, not our will be done. It's another aspect in my near deaths that I've come to understand. A near-death experience, another one that I will share with you, that I have yet to share in detail, has to do with the twin soul journey. I have shared in detail of the near-death experience um, that happened between Chris and I uh, before we came together physically, and that's in my previous YouTube videos, and I'll refer you to that video to on soul recognition for you to uh, watch for that one. But I had a near-death experience which was quite profound in which I had not told Chris the details of it. It was a night a couple of weeks before I had come home here. And I was at uh, a choir performance for a dear friend of mine. Uh, her daughter was performing in the choir at her, her uh, school. and. Um, my dear friend, she is very spiritual um, indeed, and uh, she is also uh, surrounded in uh, the uh, religion of the Mormon uh, faith as well. So she has the balance as well. She's both very spiritual and religious. And uh, so we were at her daughter's, uh, you know, gathering for this choir performance. And uh, we were in the lobby of the school after the performance and uh, during the performance it was made known that there was a, a girl who was part of the choir who had uh, just died uh, a couple of days before the actual choir performance uh, in an auto accident and as they were uh, doing the choir performance even before it was mentioned uh, i felt her presence uh, very much there um, I did not know about uh, this accident, um, but uh, I did feel her presence. And when it was known about the performance, um, it made things very, you know, very clear about, you know, her death. So we were standing in this lobby. My former husband was there. My children were there. Um, my dear friend um, was there. And her daughter had just uh, left us to go uh, visit with some of her friends. Um, after the performance and I was standing there with a water bottle in my hand and I had just finished taking uh, the last sips of it and was going to throw the plastic bottle away in the recycling bin and all of the sudden the next thing I remember was waking up on the floor outside of the school. Um, what had happened is uh, because the heart condition that I have uh, that I was born with um, that uh, in, in conjunction with what conventional medicine has diagnosed me with the three uh, terminal illnesses which I have uh, defied the doctors with <laughs> in still being here, which they've told me I shouldn't be here, um, my heart stopped is what I came to find out from an earthly standpoint had happened. Um, what I also came to find out from an earthly standpoint that had happened was in that moment of my heart stopping, I collapsed. And just before I had hit the floor, my former husband seeing me collapse had uh, caught my fall, uh, basically, and had carried me outside. Um, and what had happened, though, uh, in those moments is I went immediately back to source.
and I received a download of uh, information. I was also with the the girl who had been killed, and I also was with uh, my beloved sweet troubadour Chris. His spirit was with me. His soul was with me. He had actually astral projected to be with me in those moments. Um, and what we did in those moments is we uh, had spoken with this girl who had had the car accident and had aided her to go back into the light. And then afterwards, uh, Chris and I, um, we looked at our Akasha together. We looked at the Akashic records, the Akasha together, and saw of our coming together and being together physically, um, you know, and our living together you know, here in our home, uh, in the same home together, and marrying, and uh, doing the spiritual work together, and having spiritual circles, and bringing this wisdom forth in various ways. And also what our purpose is further, that once we leave this earth, both of us, uh, we will be rejoining with Source. Uh, some twin souls go back to uh, to be guides on the other side to those here on earth or in other dimensions and whatnot. Uh, some go back to their home star, or home planet or home galaxy or what have you. Chris and I, since it is our last life here on this earth, we are just simply going to merge back with Source. And so we saw all of that in the Akasha. Upon coming back, um, physically, uh, as I said, I was on the floor on the ground outside of the school. Uh, my dear friend at that time uh, was quite freaked out uh, because she had never seen me have a near death. And when I came back, I felt extremely uh, cold and was very sweaty, which is very indicative of the heart stopping or a heart attack or, you know, stroke type thing, uh, which is what happened physically for me. And upon uh, coming back and attempting to sit up and whatnot, my dear friend said, don't you ever do that again to me. Don't you ever leave me. Uh, she was completely right freaked out, you know, um, obviously. Um, and uh, so what I had explained to her was, is that I knew I had to come back. And I knew why now more than ever. And so later that night, I had written to Chris Yet, I never told him the details. I never even told him I had a near-death experience. All I said to him in my letter was something to the effect of that something very deep and profound happened that night that shook me to my core. And I left it at that. And nothing was ever said about it again until winter solstice that night, a couple of weeks later, when we spent our first night together that I share of in my video um, about our night together. In that night, it was Chris who came to me and said that he remembered my, about my near death that night a couple of weeks before that. He then proceeded to tell me everything I just shared with you here in this video about what happened of us seeing the Akasha together, about us being together, about him being there. He described to me what happened, um, how he saw me collapse, uh, you know, things that, details that he, unless he was there spiritually, etherically, uh, energetically, unless he had been there, he would not have known. He described it in the same detail as I'm sharing with you here. And so in that, um, for us, it was very much confirmation of knowing who we are together and the power of the twin soul connection. And so in that near death, in reviewing the Akasha, I also came to understand that we are no thing. And we did a meditational satsang on this, and so I invite you to go look in my YouTube videos on We Are No Thing. And that we are calm and centered in that space of love, and when we are calm and centered in that space of love, we have that instantaneous inner knowing. And in each of my 11 near-death experiences, I have gone through this where I have rejoined with Source 
being at home, the home within. And this, my homelands here that I live in here with Chris, is just us being together in the homelands. It's just a physical representation of the home within. My near-death experiences have been many. And I have always returned back because I know that I am not done. And I know that I have many lives to touch and Chris and I together have many lives to touch as our purpose and mission through the music, through the wisdom I'm sharing here with you in these videos, through our writings together, Song of the Princess, Song of the Troubadour, Beloved Troubadour, um, everything that I am, do, be, and in each breath and every breath that he is as well. This is our common mission and purpose together as twin souls. And the near-death experience is very real. Each time it seems I've gone under the knife, as it were, I have in some form or fashion had a near-death experience, but obviously, as you can see from what I've shared here, not every time have I had a near-death experience uh, has it been because of going into some form of surgery. I share this with you to let you know that near-death experiences are very much real. There is now scientific evidence that is coming out and also quantum physics evidence from a scientific standpoint that is now proving what us as mystics and seers and those who have experienced near-death experiences have come to understand. It is the spiritual marriage of the spiritual and the scientific as one now that is showing us here on this earth what we have already and always known. If you have had a near-death experience that you'd like to share with me, or you have questions about what's going on on the other side, because I can see and experience all multidimensional realms as a result of all my near-death experiences, I kind of deem it like the Matrix when you see in the Matrix movie the, the you know, Matrix coming down kind of thing. It's like that. Um, it's a gift that I came into remembering about 14 years ago during my walk-in process. And it has just grown in exponentialness ever since and expanded in exponentialness of infinite creation. And so if you've had a near-death experience that you do not understand, or you have questions about what's on the other side, or about loved ones who are on the other side, please feel free to contact me um, at my email address, which is nanari, N-E-N-A-R-I, at diamondlady.net. Or you can go to my website, www.diamondlady.net as well, and message me off of there, or connect with me on Facebook, or the various other ways under the con Connect with Diamond Lady link on my website. You'll see all the different ways you can connect with me. And please feel free to write and share what your near-death experiences is. And uh, if you have any questions about such as well, I would be happy to mentor you and guiding you on the journey um, of such. And so thank you for allowing me the space to share with you. Espava.